Hey there, everybody. This is me, and I hope you all are having a good extended break. And I just wanted to post a short video for you. This is just going to be kind of a explanation of what we're going to be up to next week. Um, hopefully, you all aren't too terribly confused by everything that's going on. It is 2020. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm at Cape Fear Community College. Okay, cool. I'm not confused. All right, so by way of explanation, what we're up to for the rest of the semester. And this is just going to be covering um, week eight materials. So here we go. Okay, for week eight, which is next week, not this week. I mean, you can go ahead and start looking at some of this stuff if you want to. But these assignments are for next Tuesday and Thursday. And I may add a little bit to these as we go along. Um, but for the time being, I just wanted to get some preliminary stuff out there so that... Um, Y'all can go ahead and be looking at it, and um, yeah, so next week we're not just sitting around with nothing to do. And I know this lab, uh, RAD113, is supposed to be a lot of lab activity, and I'm going to try. I haven't talked to my boss's boss about this yet, but I'm hoping that the college is going to give us special dispensation to meet at our regular time in the laboratory you know, maybe we can all wear masks or something. I mean, down in the lab, we've got PPE, right? So I don't see why we can't have our lab activities. And if anybody's sick, we'll just put a mask on them and we'll all glove and gown. We should be fine, right? This is my theory anyway. Okay, so for next week, after our break, um, and we're starting back. I uh, don't know if we're going to be here or if it's just going to totally be online. So we're preparing for the worst case scenario, which would be online. Um, if you look on Blackboard, I've uh, been building a section in there. Um, you'll see like week 8, week 9, week 10. I don't know how long this stuff's going to go on. Um, but I've put a section on Blackboard for week 8 act activities. And there's a video link. So if you would, just click on that link. And what it is is an interview with a doctor that knows a thing or three about epidemiology and the coronavirus in particular. And so I want you to watch the video. It's about 17 minutes long. And then there's an assignment also on Blackboard. So I want you to answer the questions and do a good job of it. And just go ahead and submit your assignment on Blackboard. And I'm also going to put up a discussion board for us so that we can talk about, um, you know, what precautions the hospitals are taking and, you know, what we think people are doing right and what we think maybe they could improve at. Um, so that should be a fairly interesting discussion topic, I would think. You know, it's certainly timely. I'll give it that. Hey, by the way, I hope everybody laid in a supply of toilet paper because, my goodness, uh, the racks at Walmart are completely empty. Okay, so just a few more slides here I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, a little review of hand washing. This is from RAD 110. And, you know, just go back over your hand washing stuff because, um, you know, we kind of do it. And I find myself at work a lot of times I'm just sort of washing my hands in a hurry. And I just kind of wash my palms together, you know, soap them up, rinse them off, and I'm good to go. But in reality, what we're supposed to be doing is you know washing the backs of our hands um, you know make sure you get like all the areas here like this triangle area around your thumb that can be kind of um, a place that people tend to miss in between your fingers do the interlocking fingers thing um, you know just make sure you don't leave anything uncovered and for heaven's sake um, you know don't just rely on Purell I mean Purell is good stuff but it's not magic and again, it's only as good as the person that's using it. So if you're just like putting some Purell on your hands and then rubbing them together, you know, until it gets dry, don't forget, you know, you got to spread that stuff all around. Anyways, um, make sure you don't have, okay, you see all that dirt that's up under my fingernails? That really shouldn't be there. Um, I need to clean my fingernails. Hang on a second. There we go. That's better. Okay, I'm kidding. Don't chew on your fingernails. That's not good for you. And by the way, yes, before I started doing this video, I did wash my hands. So don't get all grossed out or in a panic thinking that I'm going to die here of a nail-borne coronavirus. That's probably not going to happen. 
Okay, now, when do you wash your hands? Definitely whenever you get to work, you know, because you could have touched a bunch of stuff on the way in. At the very least, you probably, you know, you may have had to touch a doorknob or something like that. Um, before and after, you put your gloves on. And remember, your gloves are not necessarily impervious to germs and definitely not viruses. Um, viruses might be able to pass through something like a, um, a nitrile glove. And so change out, uh, change out gloves pretty often. Uh, wash your hands before and after each patient, definitely before you start eating. Okay, um, I've got here after using the restroom. I highly recommend washing my hands before I use the restroom because, you know, for obvious reasons, um, I don't want to get any diseases anywhere on my body. And definitely, if you get um, if you get any kind of patients, um, like even just saliva, mucus, a lot of our patients have like runny nose, they got sinus trouble, stuff like that. If anything gets on you, you know, try not to let it get on you. Hopefully, you're wearing gloves and um, but wash up, you know. Um, okay, if you're gonna sneeze, don't just sneeze out into the air. Watch you and blow a big cloud. Hopefully. Everybody knows to do the Count Dracula move, you know, just oh, blow your nose into your sleeve, if nothing else, or better yet, into a tissue, something along those lines. Um, and don't forget, like the computer, you don't know, once you turn and walk away, you don't necessarily know who was typing on that computer um, and if they had washed their hands or not. Uh, wash up before leaving work and when you get home. Okay, whenever you get home, leave your shoes outside if you can. Remember, you've been walking around the hospital all day long. You've been to every department, and there's no telling what's on the sole of your shoes. Nothing you want on your dinner plate, I can guarantee. So if you can, leave your shoes outside, you know, maybe in the porch or something like that. Um, you can always wipe down your shoes with those purple top wipes. Um, some places have those cavi wipes. Uh, basically, it's just like a... Um, like a fibrous cloth, you know, that you pull out and, and it's got that uh, virucidal slash uh, germicidal material built into it. Why wipe, wipe down your shoes with that? And I recommend doing that several times during the day, you know, while like if you have some downtime um, and this would be, um, you know, like if you're between patients and I know at some sites you're not supposed to sit down, but I think if you're actually like cleaning your shoes, they might make a, an exception, you know, for you to be able to do that from a seated position. Um, when you get home, also, go ahead and throw your scrubs in the wash, if at all possible, um, and take a shower. Take a shower and do some good hair washing. You know, for me, it's pretty easy. My hair is uh, easy breezy to wash. I can just use, like, hand soap, no problem. But keep yourself nice and clean. And especially during a time whenever there's, like, a, a possible viral outbreak, and I know you all have heard me say this over and over again, so you're probably sick of it, but here goes again. Water, stay hydrated, okay, drink lots. Uh, beer and wine don't count. Those actually will dehydrate you. Um, iced tea, you know, if you're feeling uh, like you're dehydrated, don't necessarily be drinking a bunch of tea and coffee because that's going to wind up causing you to lose more water than you take in. So just straight up water. Um, Good food, you know, good nutrition, fresh meats, fresh vegetables. Um, okay, you vegetarians can concentrate mostly on the vegetables, but you definitely want to keep yourself, um, you know, in good health. Um, if you're sick, take your medicine, get plenty of sleep. Uh, that's very, very important. Um, don't stay up late on the night before clinic, especially because you're going to be dog tired up in there. And when your body is fatigued, you're more susceptible to catch a disease. And we don't want that. Um, and I didn't have it written down, but, you know, definitely if you are thinking that you're sick for real, probably not a good idea to go to clinic because you could expose somebody who might be immunocompromised. And we don't want to do that. Um, so if you, if you come down sick, go to the doctor, uh, get yourself fixed up, then come back to clinic. All right, uh, that's all I got for this little section for the time being. And I was trying to keep this um, to less than 10 minutes, which I basically have succeeded at. So, uh, yeah, I'll be talking to you all later. And with any luck whatsoever, 
I'm going to be uh, actually seeing you in class at some point in the near future. Um, hopefully all this stuff's going to blow over uh, quickly and we're all going to stay safe and healthy. All right, y'all. Have a good one. I'll be talking to you. And as always, if you have any questions, call me. My telephone number is 362-7651. You can also hit me up on um, my email. You know, send me an email message. That's not a problem. Um, yeah, get in touch. Let me know um, if you have questions, and I'll try to answer them. All right, y'all. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later.